Hello and welcome to another episode of Artist Block, or A Block for short. Today's title is Sketch It Out. So, in the last video we talked about the general overview of what we're doing in this series and we're just getting an essential idea which is try and learn how to draw or try to get better at drawing. All of us are doing our damnedest to make sure that we're really good at that. So, today's topic, what are we doing? Well, as explained at the end of last video, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to start looking at the tools that we need to get started and a couple other things that we might want to look at as far as consideration. So, first things first, what do you need? Well, first of all, you're going to need some paper and you may want to invest in some really good paper. Maybe not. Most important thing is you have some type of paper. I would suggest getting a drawing pad and a sketchbook. Now, a drawing pad is something a little bit bigger than a sketchbook. Uh, I would consider that maybe 18 by 24, something that's pretty big, something that you could draw your really big pieces in, or you could just take a whole page and just fill it up with all kind of nonsense. Anyway, your drawing pads are really good for making really good observational pieces, and they're good for going outside and propping things up and just drawing from life. Sketchbooks are good for that too, but they're also good for getting your ideas out. Your sketchbook is usually just your process and information type thing. You can put anything in your sketchbook and it should work just fine. Usually I put a mixture of notes and a mixture of drawings in my sketchbook or processes for my next big projects like my printmaking or other things like that. In any case, it's really important that you have a really nice sketchbook. Something with acid-free paper, something that won't you know, deteriorate over time. So you might want to get one of those and if you can help it, try to spend a little bit of money on your sketchbook. It is your sketchbook after all, and you can do whatever you want. I got this $5 one from Michael's. It's pretty, pretty good. Um, it was bought for me actually. The only thing is, is that uh, these Michael's sketchbooks are like $5 and I only had this for a couple of months, maybe like five or six months maybe. And this one's already kind of starting to fall apart at the back, but that's probably because I'm just kind of rough with my sketchbooks, but whatever, whatever floats your boat, Point being, you're going to need some paper to get started. Now, let's move on to the next part. Next important thing, you're going to need pencils. Pencils are really important. And there's different types of pencils. Like there's woodless pencils, there's regular wood pencils, there's mechanical pencils. Oh, excuse me. Every time I every time I do these, I have to burp. But that's okay. So, woodless pencils, regular pencils, mechanical pencils, all of those are viable options. They have different, different materials in them that make them either better or worse or maybe more favored for your things that you might like. So for instance, a wooded pencil is a pretty standard pencil. You get your number two pencil, it does work. I don't like wood pencils because it's hard to sometimes cut them or rather sharpen them. Um, sometimes I use a little uh, block or I can use a block of sandpaper to file the tip down or maybe I might use a box cutter and I cut it down to make it a little bit more sharper. And you could definitely do that. Um, you also wanted to look at, you know, what kind of wood pencil you're getting. Sometimes the wood can be kind of soft and if you hit the pencil a little bit too hard on something, it'll break on the inside. And then that's how sometimes you get those really, really annoying uh, situations where you keep sharpening your pencil. It doesn't want to stay sharp. The little tip just keeps falling off. Sometimes that's the reason why. Sometimes it's, it's broken on the inside. So that happens. Woodless pencils are really cool. I actually personally like those a lot when it comes to my drawing because I can use them. I can use a side for uh, putting in value and I can use a tip for hard lines. And those are really good, but you know there's drawbacks to those too. What are the drawbacks, Noodle? Well, I'll tell you. Sometimes they fall, and when they fall, they snap. They snap like little pathetic twigs, like, like, uh, like your bones. They break. So, a lot of times you might wanna avoid them, so sometimes you might just uh, stick with, uh, you know, wooded pencil, or you can use mechanical pencils that are a little bit cheaper, sometimes and you get a pretty good bang for your buck you have really good erasers on them the white eraser is really good which is another thing if you're gonna get erasers i would stick with something that's probably that's probably white because it's a little bit easier um we'll get to erasers in just a second but let's go back to pencils um you want to make sure that you have a decent range of pencils if you're doing if you're starting off everything so you might want to have a, a pencil that's maybe an hb a 2B, a 4B, and an 8B. Those are really good range, and you just have to worry about your pressure sensitivity with your hands. So if you draw kind of heavy, heavy handedly, you might want to just make sure that you don't, you know, do too much damage with that pencil because putting on too much of a dark mark, you won't be able to erase it very well. With that being said, um, also you might want to get an eraser. So I'll go back to that topic. You may want to get an eraser that's either, that's probably white, 
I usually get white erasers because white erasers don't leave any streaks or really disgusting smudges like a pink eraser or any other color eraser would. So if you're degenerate, you can do pink, but I usually use white erasers because they're just usually a better medium. So use white erasers. You also might want to invest on getting a kneaded eraser because a kneaded eraser is really good for all those really hard to reach, um, those hard to reach composition parts, like a really specific line that you want to kind of clean up. You can knead a kneaded eraser into any shape you want it to so it can erase things a lot more efficiently. You're going to want to replace these every now and again though because they do get a buildup of graphite or charcoal or what have you and then you're stuck with an eraser that can't really erase anything. Also they get dirty very easily because they're sticky so be careful of that and try to circulate them out every now and again although otherwise they're very good tools. You also want to may maybe introduce a couple of other materials into your list like pastels or colored pencils or charcoal or stuff like that all of those are really interesting and they're all different ways to make a mark um, oil pastels sometimes are really cool especially because they're really vibrant and they're made out of pigment oil and a couple other things um, then there's also colored pencils which are made out of wax and you could build up with those and you can make really nice compositions out of just uh, burnishing the wax burnishing is just a term for um, polishing in a sense you just want to polish it and make it work and it'll look really pretty especially if you add more layers and add more complexity to the um, different layers of with color and then there's charcoal which is the old master type tool i call it that because it's really it's kind of ancient but it's as old as it gets but it's as good as it gets too sometimes charcoal is really light it's cheap it's efficient um it's really dark so it makes really good marks the only problem is sometimes with charcoal is that sometimes it doesn't stay on the paper so you might want to invest in firm charcoal um, or you might want to get some comp compressed charcoal I believe it's called which is a sturdier type of charcoal which holds a mark on paper a little bit better but with any of those mediums any of these mediums graphite included you might want to invest in fixative fixative is really good especially working with big compositions it also works with ink too um, if you're going to use a if you're going to get a medium that is easily spread like charcoal or graphite and it sticks to other other surfaces get fixative there's finish there's final fixative and then there's workable fixative fixative in a general sense means that you can spray it on to a surface and it'll hold it there without it uh, rubbing off with something else so if you put make a really nice color pencil piece you pour put some fixative on it it won't uh, leave the page it'll stay still Final fixative is like that final layer, kind of like a varnish, I guess you'd call it, if it was like wood. It's like a varnish and it finishes it so it seals the picture onto a piece so it doesn't go anywhere. Workable fixative, you put it on and you can come back and work on it. So workable fixative, final fixative, same thing. Well, not really, just explain the whole thing. Anyway, and then there's also ink. So if you really want to invest in ink, we can talk about this in another particular um video but ink is also something that you good you can get it's pretty decent i would suggest getting a uh, g2 pen g2 pens are really smooth and they're refillable so you can add more ink to them as you need personally i think they're very smooth and they do really bold lines if you want to do um line work you can definitely do those um you could also invest in a calligraphy set but we'll talk about that another time because basic drawing you don't really need a pen especially if you're trying not to have pens that, you know erase that um, can't erase but anyway so we got that for the traditional stuff now for the digital side of things you might want to look over your options so for digital artists it's a little bit harder because of course there's a price gap so i'll give you an example for me i'm currently running on my own computer that i have hanging out next to us and i also have my tablet i don't use a digital tablet because i don't really like the um, I like the blind contouring effect of it, so I use a Cintiq. I bought my Cintiq a couple years back and I bought it for around $800. That was an investment that I was willing to make on my part, and I knew I was going to be doing this for a long time, so I put my money where my mouth was and I bought the thing. And I can't say that I'm, I can't say that I'm upset about that. I'm really happy that I bought it. It's really interesting. However, it will set you back $800 if you're willing to buy that. On the smaller end of the spectrum, there is the Wacom tablets that are a little bit cheaper. They're the Intuos and there's the Draw, there's a Bamboo. All of those are really good options and I have a lot of friends that use those and they could probably vouch for them and, and probably do all kinds of stuff like that. Personally, I'm not into those. I don't like them that much. And it can be aggravating to get to, to do initial work with them. But after a while, 
you really start to understand how to draw a bit better, especially with muscle memory, because you're using your hand-eye coordination a whole lot more than you normally would. There is also, um, so there's a price range of that. There's also, you know, the optional um, thing like an iPad or something like that, which, which is in and of itself its own computer with its own software and stuff like that. And those are really viable too, because, you know, that's a big computer and you're basically putting everything into one thing and it's a lot more mobile. So, um, the Cintiq has a version like that, but I've heard bad things about it. Don't quote me on that, but I've heard I've heard that they don't really have good battery life compared to an iPad. So maybe stick to the iPad. Maybe if I get one, eventually I can review it and we'll talk about it. But anyway, um, and then there's one more thing, which is software. There's different types of software depending on where you go. So usually I stick with Clip Studio. Clip Studio to me is uh, my favorite art um, software because I like how simple it is and how effective it is because it has basically everything i need out of it it's got animation it's got comic work it's got regular illustration stuff like that and it's really versatile it's a japanese software i believe and it is extremely viable in the animation market and comic market right now it also has uh, modeling software so you can um, put models on your screen you could draw on the models and actually make um, more accurate poses and stuff like that and then there's other things like Photoshop and Illustrator, which are really, really hard. I actually personally don't like those two because they're kind of exclusive and you have to kind of learn, 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 learn how to use them. And I mean, in a sense that they're really tough as like a beginner's curve. Oh my God, it's insane. But once you do know it, it's like the standard. So it's something that you could definitely get into. And there's other ones like there's um, Krita, which I think is I think is free. And there's Fire Alpaca, and then there's also Sai, which you could probably find in the internet somewhere. Don't worry about this, pirates. I'll keep your secrets safe. And another thing that you might want to look at is uh, you know just get a general idea of what kind of software you're interested in. Maybe if you just want a light sketching software, you might like uh, Clip Studio, Mac Clip Studio, um, Audio, Autodesk, Autodesk Sketchbook. I used to use that when I started off, and I liked it. I think Autodesk went free this year, so I think it's actually pretty good lightweight software to pick up. The only thing is that you can't do masking layers and stuff like that. We'll get to digital side a little bit later. For now though, we'll talk about the softwares and the like in a general sense. So yeah, you might want to look at your price range. Usually the, the higher you pay, the more you get with it or the more features you you can work with like animation or whatever and that's not to say that other softwares won't have that too but you may find more help or a lot more um of a community behind these bigger more established um softwares if you buy something and you just uh stick with the community you probably do a lot better okay so we got that out of the way next we have to answer some big questions now first of all you want to know what your art looks like or what you want it to look like rather you might think that you might want your art looking like oh i don't know like picasso maybe you might want to do cubism or maybe you might want to do um you know photorealism or you might be interested in semi-realism or cartoons whatever the case may be you might want to look at what your favorite artists are doing right now and kind of look at, at their style and see what part of that do you feel makes it nice you can emulate that for the time being you, you know start working on your on your style and eventually you'll get to the point where your style is paying homage to those kind of people so you definitely definitely want to do that you kind of want to get an idea of what those artists are like how they do their workflow because it'll definitely help you it'll definitely help you get into your into your your different timing of doing your art it may help you with your choices as far as what do I start with, what kind of medium do I want to use, do I want to use Copic markers or do I want to use colored pencil, all those things are really important. So do a lot of research when you're setting things up and making sure that what you want to do is what you want to do and not what, not what your favorite artist wants to do because sometimes, sometimes it's just not viable and sometimes you may be much more happy with doing something completely different. But that's just food for thought. Then you might want to ask yourself what time do I want to draw? Do you want to draw in the morning? Do you want to draw in public? Do you want to draw in private? All those things you might want to ask yourself before you get into drawing full time. Personally, I draw at night or I draw during class when I have time to actually listen and draw. And a lot of times, teachers, teachers, for those out there, it's actually a good idea to let your, draw, your children draw. Your children, your students draw. And it sounds counterintuitive, but I had a teacher explain it to me in a sense where he always liked when we were drawing because 
he knew that we were thinking about things. And this is kind of true. A lot of times you can, you can, you know, dual function. It's multitasking. It's different parts of the brain. And sometimes you can definitely do that and you can still function. So if you feel like you can handle that, then go for it. Otherwise, if you feel like you need quiet time, you might want to go find a place that might have a really nice place to relax and draw, like maybe a library or maybe out in the park where nobody can see you and you're just drawing, you know, nature or anything like that. So those are all good things you might want to ask yourself. Um, you might want to also ask if you should show your work to others. Personally, I say yes, because I believe that the artist gets a lot of feedback from the general population and those general populace usually have pretty good insight. Um, we often look as just the artist. So working as the artist and taking a step back as the art viewer and the art critique critic, you often get a different view and a different perspective when you're looking at yourself in two different lights. So get a second opinion every now and again. It doesn't hurt. And sometimes your, your sketchbook, if it's not, you know, personal and full of things that are a little bit too risque, show it to people. Ask them what they think. Ask them what can be improved. And take that into consideration. And don't be discouraged if that happens because a lot of times it can be really discouraging if you show people the stuff that you think is you think sucks but in actuality it's really good and you're just overreacting probably i know i do it all the time and i sound kind of blunt about it but it's kind of true a lot of times i look at what i'm working on and it can sometimes seem as if i'm kind of upset or mad because it's not what i want it to be or it's not good enough but in theory it's or in practice rather, it's actually pretty good. It's just that I'm a little bit too much of a perfectionist. But that, we also move on to social media. This kind of stems into the sharing your artwork category. Do you want to share your artwork with, with people online? And if you're trying to grow an audience, sure. You could also get commissioned that way and you can get money off of your art if you're really interested in that. So keep that in the back of your mind because certainly that is how you meet other artists who are willing to help you and are willing to um, give you feedback and thoughts about it and don't be afraid to take criticism take it on the chin you'll be okay and don't let anybody discourage you from your drawing if they tell you something mean turn the other cheek and keep drawing oh sorry Ooh. <sighs> oh my goodness sorry that <laughs> I um uh... I don't know why, but I get kind of gassy during these things. I don't know what's going on with me. Anyway, we'll move on from that subject. Just remember to take everything on the chin. You'll be okay. As long as you keep drawing, you don't deter yourself, you'll be okay. And now we'll go with the how to begin thing. So like I said before, how do you begin? Do some research. Do some research into what you like. If you really like Rick and Morty, look at look at Justin Roiland and what he does. <laughs> Just, just copy the guy for a little while. It's not a good idea, I mean, not a bad idea, to get some references of your favorite art and putting it in a file, and then every now and again, or maybe at night when you have some time to yourself, pull up a picture and just kind of draw from it, trying to get a central idea of how somebody makes something and how they make it pleasing to the eye. Because some things are really good, especially if you take a life, take a study from life and just dissect into its basic parts. That's really helpful. I find that probably one of the best ways to get into your art flow and getting into actually, you know, leveling up as far as your skills go. And then you might want to also follow one of the footsteps of your favorite creators and artists and stuff like that. Now I talked about this a little bit, but I'll go in a little bit more detail. So you want to look at what you like as a as a creator. Do you like anime? Do you like manga? Do you like video games? Do you like photorealism? Do you like all those kind of stuff? Those kind of things will shape your art. They'll definitely shape your art. You'll see it as you go on and you'll be like, this looks like this. Well, probably because that's what you've been influenced by. I know personally, my favorite artist, one of my favorite artists anyway, is Akira Toriyama because I'm a big Dragon Ball Z fan. Massive Dragon Ball Z fan. And if you look at my art, I, I, I big muscly dudes. <laughs> it's a thing. It's true. I swear to God. Uh, Akira Toriyama is one of my favorite artists and he inspired me to, to, to draw and to create things. And now that I'm old enough to where I'm actually doing this kind of thing, it feels as if I'm kind of like, you know, following in those footsteps and eventually I hope to pay homage to such an important creator in my life. And that's kind of what you want to do as an artist. You want to sit there and you want to make homage to those gone and put your own twist on it. Because if you're putting your own twist on it, you're becoming your own person. You don't want to be a clone because if you're a clone, you'll just fade out of existence really quickly. Anyway, and that's pretty much it 
to be honest. The only other thing I can say is I can give you guys some homework. So, what kind of homework could I assign you on this this uh this uh this this, this page? I would say I would start by assigning you something simple. Get your materials. You want to get your sketchbooks, your paper, your pencils, any other medium you may get, your erasers, your fixative, whatever you might want to get for your sketches, stuff like that. Because we're going to get started. Next video, we're going to definitely work on drawing basic shapes. And if you want to kind of get a little bit of a head start, start drawing some shapes. You know, spheres, circles, rectangles, boxes, uh, cubes, that kind of thing. You want to get a good sense of how to draw them. And don't worry if they're ugly because it's your sketchbook. They can be as ugly as you want. But for the time being, you kind of just want to focus on those general overview things just to make sure that you're at least polished slowly so you can get into the bulk of our next video, which is going to be drawing. We're going to start drawing. We're going to start doing shapes. We're going to start doing all kinds of stuff like that. We're going to have a blast. With that being said, I think I've covered everything. If you like this video, go on ahead and hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to like it. I mean, dominate that like button, please. And you can also share this video. If somebody is struggling with art and they're trying to get started in art or anything like that, sit on the video. I'd really appreciate it. But with that being said, thank you all. Good luck out there, strangers. I'll see you again next time.